17 offers because I put like every single offer. Hello everyone, this is Ashley Jamerson coming to you from Ashley Lambert Realty and it is February 2022. I was supposed to continue my whole little series of my count up to Disney and to be honest, I filmed a whole bunch of stuff but a lot was happening, a lot was happening and I just didn't have time to post it. I had a lot of clients that were supposed to close in 2021. There were a lot of fires and a lot of delays and you know, it's the holidays as well. So I had to spend time with my family. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to let things settle a little bit and I'm going to post a video at the beginning of the year. That didn't happen either. So let me give you like a quick recap. If you don't care, I will put like a little timestamp down in the details below where you can just click that and go on to like the real estate stuff. But for those of you who are wondering how 2021 ended for me, continue to watch. So the Disney trip was a surprise for our kiddos. It was so hard to keep it a surprise. That morning they went to school as usual and I put them in their Christmas sweaters. And I guess they just figured that it was the last day of school before Christmas. Mom is gonna have us matching because sometimes I do stuff like that. Little did they know that we were gonna pick them up right at 12 so they wouldn't be counted as absent and then we were gonna whisk them away via plane to Orlando and go to Disney. So the surprise went off very, very well. We showed up at the school wearing the same shirts as them, so we went as a family wearing the same ugly Walt Disney World Christmas sweater, which is so ugly it's pretty. <laughs> Reggie, tell them where they're going. Yes. So we went down there and the whole, I'll say the week and a half before this trip, I was watching the weather, watching the weather. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's gonna rain. In the back of my mind, I was just hoping that it was going to be a typical Florida rain where it just comes on for like 20, 30 minutes and then it goes away. But no, it rained from the time we got there almost to the time we left. It took a break during the Christmas party, which was like the main purpose of us going was to attend the Christmas party. And it took a little break, ruined our parade, literally, it canceled the parade. The rain literally only stopped long enough for the fireworks. So it was like raining, raining, raining. We were riding some of the rides in the rain or the, like a little misty, ugly, you know, like it was a drizzle, it was just nasty. So it stopped long enough for the fireworks, which were stunning. So we've seen fireworks before, Disney fireworks, but the Christmas fireworks are even better than the Halloween party fireworks. And I absolutely loved the Halloween party fireworks. The trip though, this trip was different than the other trips that we've had, like I guess since COVID began. This trip was different because this was our first trip using Genie Plus, and it was also one of the few trips that we didn't use the VIP private tour situation. The Genie Plus thing is, is not my friend. I don't really like it. I'm the planner of our family. So I had to wake up at seven o'clock to get my bearings so I could log on to the My Disney Experience app and book our two fancy rides. I guess the rides we have to pay for, which was like Rise of the Resistance and Mickey and Minnie Runaway Train. I had to wake up at seven o'clock and snag these rides. And like the times that we wanted, we had to, had to keep on going back. And so did that, ordered our lunch again at 7.20 in the morning before we even stepped foot in the park. So I like the idea of planning, the relaxation of planning for the months, weeks, and days before the trip. And then just knowing what we're going to do rather than fly by the seat of our pants. It was very frustrating for me because I am a planner, so super duper frustrating. We did have fun, but it was rainy, so I had to keep on looking at the Genie Plus app and also monitor the rain and then find things that we could do to make our time valuable in the park that day. We didn't do any park hopping, so we did Hollywood Studios, we rode the rides, we did the thing. I tried to keep my expectations low 
So I was there for A, the, the Christmas party the night before. I wanted to wear the sweaters, get the cute pictures. The following day, my goal was to find my Starbucks tumblers. I wanted the black 50th anniversary one and then the clear one that I typically, this is not, yes it is, this is the one I got. This is the 50th anniversary tumbler. I stood in a long line at Starbucks Hollywood Studios to get that and yeah, we went to Epcot, we rode the Ratatouille ride. <laughs> Ratatouille is probably one of my top 10 Disney movies, so I'm really happy that that was added to the France Pavilion. But yeah, um, I don't know. It was, it was stressful. It was a stressful trip. It was a fun trip. It was just, I don't like a lot of rain. You know, there's so many things you can do at Disney and it just kept on raining, kept on raining. So when I got back from the Disney trip, I immediately had to switch gears into Thanksgiving. So I had to go to the grocery store, pick up some final things I needed to cook dinner and I cook everything from scratch. Today I'm making jalapeno cheese puffs as an appetizer, apple pie egg rolls. So I gotta peel and chop a lot of apples, bacon and pistachio goat cheese balls, candy pecan cranberry, goat cheese balls. I'm gonna have like a sweet and a savory appetizer thing. Two types of cookies, double chocolate cookies here. Thumbprint cookies with raspberry filling. Gotta make the deviled eggs, green bean casserole, pineapple cheese ball, a throwback HelloFresh meal. My husband's aunt doesn't really eat meat. And so she requested this cranberry apple cake. If you guys have received my magazine, then this is also known as the housewarming cake. Oh yeah, and I'm making Hawaiian bread and rolls. Today is mostly a prep day. I'm getting started super duper late because last night I put another home under contract and I started on Thanksgiving Eve and literally cooked <laughs> all the way up until people started coming on Thanksgiving. It was very stressful, very fun. It was my very first time cooking in um, our new kitchen. It's our first holiday season here, really. So I really try to do it big and I exhausted myself. Every year I try to add one or two new things to like my menu, I like to try things out. And this year, the thing that won, especially won my father-in-law over for sure, but the one thing that was like really, really good was the um, my apple pie egg rolls. That's new, so we could have like vanilla ice cream with it or we can have like caramel drizzle so that was the thing I added for Thanksgiving and it was just a lot of food by the time I was done I think I wanted to take the longest nap ever and I believe the following day I didn't do much at all because I was so tired one thing if you have like hardwood floors or like laminate vinyl plank like a hard surface look on Amazon for those anti fatigue foot mats things we have three of them and they are a legit lifesaver continuing on with all the Christmas festivities we did the Christmas lights at Charlotte Motor Speedway our hack that we do now is we don't listen to the music that the Motor Speedway offers for the drive-through we literally just play like a hip-hop Christmas mix which is really fun and it's old school stuff and very nostalgic and I think it's better than half the music that they play <laughs> during the ride through the Charlotte Motor Speedway. But it's a really good tradition that we started and we're gonna definitely continue with that going on. Now, Mexico. Yes, we squeezed one more vacation into 2021 and we went to Moon Palace Resort in Mexico or Cancun, Mexico. And this trip made me think differently about my Disney obsession, about how much I love Disney, to the point where I'm heavily considering still selling one of my DVC memberships. I I don't know, it's, it's a difference. So like when you go to Disney or Universal, places like that, you are go, go, go. You have the plan, you gotta do all of this stuff like that. And when we were in Mexico, it was so chill, the kids, didn't really want to hang out with us like that. They wanted to stay in the playroom. We did not mind because my husband and I was able to spend a lot of quality time together. Everything was included as if we were on a cruise ship and this trip was booked because our New Year's cruise was canceled. No, it wasn't canceled. I don't remember if it was canceled. Oh, the vaccine thing. So we're vaccinated, but when I canceled, they didn't have a kid or a child vaccine and 
they could only have but so many people on the cruise ship that it was weird. I was like, I'm not gonna roll the dice on a vacation. I'm not gonna do that. Let's just cancel it, book another cruise because I'm not gonna lose a vacation either. So we canceled it and I was searching online and I was really, really considering Sandals Resorts. I read a lot of reviews. I went on YouTube because that's what YouTubers do. We look at other YouTubers and I discovered Moon Palace Resort and it just, it just didn't disappoint. I can't think of one thing other than customs when we arrived and going getting from the airport to our transport to there was a whole bunch of them will you buy these timeshares will you do this will you want to do this and it was very stressful with two kids who want to say hello to everybody moon palace resort if you like cruises but you don't want to go on a cruise check out I'm, i promise you you will not be disappointed we went to the cancun one we are going to go back. We're going to we're going to go back to a Moon Palace resort. We're going to go to Jamaica next time. But they have quite a few of them. These resorts are owned by one family in Mexico, and I mean, it smells beautiful. I on the plane in the airport, I ordered the scent of Moon Palace Resort because it smells lovely. Now that's what our house smells like. That's what our house smells like because it's amazing. So between the last time I filmed and the end of the year, I had four houses under contract, six closings, which is a lot for someone who took time off. And if you were trying to book time on my Calendly app, which is linked below, there were no times available because I legit had to give myself permission to be unavailable. And that's really, really hard for me. It's really hard for me to not work with people or not have my schedule open for people to reach out to me. But looking back, if I didn't do that, I would have been like completely stressed out because six or seven of my files that were supposed to close in 2021 rolled into 2022. There were delays upon delays. I had houses closing on the last day possible of the year. And I honestly believe that if it wasn't my preferred attorney closing it, like we wouldn't have got in, that was stressful. It's, a, it's just a lot. I was like, oh my gosh, so it's crazy. But real estate is fun. So now my schedule is back open and you guys can definitely schedule a time to chat with me. I do 30 minute buyer consultations and I do 15 minute like quick questions. Now there is a question on there and it says, um, I, do, I no longer work with NACA. Do you understand? I don't work with NACA anymore. And people will check yes, they understand I don't work with it and they still call me about NACA. I'm like, stop calling me <laughs> about this program. I'm telling you, I don't use it. We are in such a seller's market right now that it's ridiculous. Like it's still going on. I have listings that I sold that had um, 17 offers because I put like every single offer. So on the, I have to say what they offered, what type it is, break it down. And then I have to um, present it to my client and I also write down the time that I presented it to my client. So on just one house, Laborde, we got to 11. The house hit the market as coming soon on the 20th. It went active where people could actually see it on the 22nd, which was a Friday. And by then we already had nine. And then we had 12 offers by the following day. And they were so tired of people coming in their house because there was like showings and showings and show I told them to leave. They wanted to come home. Their house finally went under contract. They accepted it on, on Monday. So yeah, that just gives you an idea. And I have to present all the offers. Yeah, it's a seller's market. And it's I'll have to make like a whole other video of how to be prepared for a seller's market. But I just wanted to update you guys let you know what's going on. I'm back working full time and all that good stuff. I was trying to film this like late December, early January, I was trying to get this done. But your girl caught COVID. I didn't catch COVID at Disney, in the airports, Myrtle Beach, Mexico, did not catch COVID. I catch COVID here, here. I was like, of all places I could catch COVID. So I, um, I started showing symptoms January 17th, tested positive on the 19th, and then I was just like chilling 
and quarantining and things like that until I felt better. My symptoms were not that bad, probably because I am vaccinated or maybe the viral load wasn't high, but it's February 3rd and this is my first full week back. Literally all week I have been busting my booty to lay eyes on all my properties, update my clients. I have quite a few out of town clients that are in state and quite a few out of state clients. I believe I have like 22, 23 active files right now. It's been a lot, it's been a lot. So I'm back and it's it's been fun. Things are trying to calm down a little bit. The interest rates are going up, but I see more inventory coming on the market. I'm getting more phone calls from my on-site preferred agents that I work with about upcoming inventory or things coming back on the market, probably because the interest rates are going up. And even though they are increasing, it's at like 3.875, which is still lower historically. Like it's, it's very low to be in the threes anything. So, you know, that's, that's one of the things when you look at PITI, one of them is the interest rate and that's a big deal. However, one thing I did learn a couple days ago is that Union County, Monroe, Union County, they lowered their taxes for this tax year. They're like one of the only counties that I work that lowered the interest rate. It actually was, let's see, Union County was 0 0.7309 last year, and this year is 0 0.588. And then if you add in the Monroe, and it's still, it's just lower. I just, I was very, very shocked that they went down. And I believe that's, again, the only place that went down this year. I'm looking at my, my little chart here with all, all the tax rates and things like that. Gaston County is very low in their taxes. Um, Huntersville taxes are lower than Charlotte taxes. Huntersville is at 0.8569. I was surprised to learn that Kannapolis in Cabarrus County is 1.37. I was like, what? That's, that's crazy. So again, so it's part of one of the, the PITIs. You wanna look at the interest rate and you also wanna look at the tax rate for where you wanna to relocate to because if you're looking for a commute to work and you're looking at a certain radius, the tax rate could be the difference between 0.734 and 1.37 and that will affect your monthly mortgage. So just a little a little tidbit for, for you guys. Again, I am back. If you guys want to chat with me, if you want to schedule a time to chat with me, um, definitely schedule a time in that Calendly app below or in that Calendly link below. And if you have any questions, any real estate questions, please post them below in the comments or follow me on Instagram and comment on one of the pictures and I'll write the question down and I will answer it in another video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I know that some of you just come here for real estate stuff, but I know that some of you are waiting for video number four. I was pushing it and I never posted the video. So that's a follow up. Right now we have a love hate relationship with Disney. Do I have a Disney trip plan? Of course, because I have problems. I, I'm still going to Disney, but not Disney World, which is good. Good. That's really good for us. That's, that's really good for us. For the whole year, we're not going to Disney World until the end of the year. Does that count? I don't know if that counts. So thanks again, guys, for watching and definitely subscribe. I typically talk about real estate, but again, for my subscribers, this one was for you guys. And I look forward to chatting with you in the next video.